Senators out with details of a $118 billion aid package that includes money for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, uh, and bolstering security at the southern U.S. border. Uh, President Biden says he supports the proposal, including new emergency authority to shut down uh, the border when it gets overwhelmed. But House Speaker Mike Johnson uh, responded by, by tweeting that if the bill makes it to the House, it'll be dead on arrival. He had indicated Saturday that the House would vote on a separate $17 billion uh, Israel aid package. Join us now, Democratic Senator Mark Warner uh, of Virginia. Is it a Senator, welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Joe. As always. Is it a foregone conclusion that, that once again, this is sounds good, not, not going to happen? Well, first of all, let's look at the pieces of this. In this is what I've been fighting for literally for months on end, and that is aid to Ukraine. Is this country going to go ahead and honor its commitment, or should no country in the world ever trust us again if we turn down the Ukrainians at this point, particularly after the Europeans stepped up with 50 billion euro just a week ago? On the border, uh, took a long time, but this is the most significant change in border policy in decades. It ends the whole program around check and, uh, catch and release. It ends up putting about 4,000 more CBP and ICE agents on the border. It increased checking for fentanyl coming into our country. And it makes changes to the parole policy. All the things that Donald Trump asked for in 2018, all the things my Republican friends asked for earlier in the year. You, the the uh, I guess the trope, the conservative trope, is that it uh, the the increased border agents are to process more people to let them in. Actually, now that it's out, you can actually read the bill and you can see that what it is is it makes sure there is more processing so can folks can actually get sent back. The remarkable thing was about 95 percent of the people who were coming through on the asylum program. Got caught at the border, processed, released in for a couple years, and then that called catch and release. Now that is ended, but you're going to need more folks. You're going to need more beds at the border to send people back. I mean, you've seen the numbers, uh, obviously unacceptable, and, and you've seen the, those other numbers troubling. Yeah, the border's a mess. You've seen the other troubling numbers about, uh, I think, the president's 30 points underwater versus Donald Trump on on how to handle. Uh, immigration. So every time the president looks into the camera and says, I've done all I could, no one believes that. No one believes that. And we know when he did, when he did come in a couple of years ago, he said, come on in, and sort of got rid of a lot of the, the things that Trump, Trump had instituted. Why not cop to that? Why? It, it just seems like if you, you can keep saying, it's not my fault, it's not my fault, I've done all I could. You got one guy, John Fetterman, who, who, who seems to acknowledge it. Are, will you break ranks and say this yeah, is the, the president's fault? The border's a mess. The border's a mess. We all acknowledge that. So we can either carp about it or make the policy Could he changes. do executive? Make couldn't he do some changes. executive decisions? Every that, Republican senator who is complaining about this deal has said repeatedly, you got to change the law. Donald Trump said, you got to change the law. We now are giving what is needed a significant change of the law it took a long time to get it negotiated. Yep. Combined with stepping up for Ukraine, combined with stepping up for Israel and humanitarian aid in the region. And the question is going to be, folks who've asked for this, are they going to take the deal or are they going to say no? I think they're not going to take it. Take I know it might be because we it want to punt. Be Trump's fault because, because we might want to punt right. until for political reasons. It's an reasons. election issue. It is. Even it, in but, hypocrisy ridden Washington, this is rich. It, 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 we, every day we talk about it. The hypocrisy, you could cut it with a knife on both thing, sides. Again, I know. This border deal, you got the BRT, you got the chamber, you got NAM, you've got all the business groups that you guys talk about here every day. They're all for it. Let's do it. Is there any, it, it, are there parts of your party where the actual, uh, the inclination is to open the border because we are missing. We, we are a million short on people that could we could give jobs to. There's, I, I, the, the, the hearts are our party, and frankly, the business community as well. That says we need more Ill, high skill workers. Do they want to enable we illegal? Do they H2B want to enable workers? illegal immigration? Whether they're going to vote, do these people become Democratic voters eventually? Is that, do you ever really believe that that's part of the, the rationale for, for the far left of your party? What the I squad, for example. What I acknowledge straight up is the border's a mess. We can either complain about it or we can pass right. a law that would give completely new policies and the ability to right. shut it down. And the president said he would. Senator, will you just shut down, either shut down or not this, this question? 
Because, it, look, there's the question that Joe's asking, this idea that somehow Democrats... I see people that have said that, um, yeah. All sorts of people, uh, because they will effectively crowd out uh, the Republicans. I mean, that, that is a perspective. So I think you should eat... I'm, I'm not telling you what to do. I think you should either say, yes, that's the strategy, or no, that's not the strategy. <laughs> I have not heard but, a but, single Democratic elected official ever say, let's just open the borders and t come take all. It is not the policy. There's jobs the waiting party. for. There's jobs waiting for a lot of people. It is not the no. premise of the Democratic okay. Party. There are business groups who have said that, but yeah. that's not the premise of the Democratic. How about how much we rat? Is, is the president have a carte blanche to deal with Iran the way he sees fit, or is he going to hear from? So I think what the admiral said in. The, oh, you were watching. The top, absolutely, I watch you guys all the time. That's what nice. He said, I think he's kind of struck. Who's the your right favorite? Balance. Hey, listen. For all your Who's kids? the most provocative? <laughs> okay. But not favorite. What, he, what <laughs> he's done is, I think he's trying to thread this needle. You have got about 100 strikes in Syria and Iraq. You've got 50 plus. Do we strike in Iran? Even Donald Trump, when he brought us all together back, I think 2018, 2019, he told the uh, senior leadership, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, that he thought he was going to go ahead and strike Iran. He changed his mind because he thought, that was not the right thing to put us into war. Right. He ended up saying he's going to take, as a president should, and pick his time and place. And it was six months later that he took out Soleimani, General Soleimani, the head of the Iranian Quds Force. He didn't take him out in Iran. He took him out in Iraq. And I think that was the prudent thing to do. I think it was the right thing to do. I was just in the region, in Saudi Arabia, in Jordan, in Israel. I didn't hear anyone say, the best thing we ought to do in this region at this moment in time is going to direct war with Iran. Hey, Senator, how, how does cyber security and cyber attacks, how does that change the geopolitical strengths and weaknesses? Because militarily, there aren't a lot of places that can compete with us. When it comes to cyber attacks, though, when you have a nation state that's coming after our countries, after our companies, that puts things on a different Cyber plane. is really asymmetric. Um, it's one of the reasons why a couple years ago, we put a bipartisan bill together that says, if you've got a major cyber attack, you've got to at least tell the government, not so we can regulate you, so we can tell other folks in the private sector. And one of the things I'm most worried about right now, you know, we're 10 months away from election, and I think we are less prepared in terms of disinformation, misinformation, cyber attack in 2024 than we were in 2020. That's because you've got almost this perfect storm. You've got countries like Russia who would very much like to interfere in our elections so they could make sure we don't support Ukraine. You've got a number of election deniers uh, that have increased in our country. And you have a court ruling that has basically re uh, restricted the ability of the government to even talk on a voluntary basis to social media companies. And then on top of all that, you add artificial intelligence, which can bring at scale and speed misinformation, disinformation, messing with our elections, and you got a perfect storm.